gentlemen, welcome to episode 171 of the It's Obvious podcast. My name is Garrett Drake. I'm joined across the table and on video for the first time in quite a while. Jacob Alka. It's great to see you. It's great to see you too, Jacob. I can't remember the last time I actually did see you. It's been like two or three weeks. Has it really? Yeah. Man, what a shame. Mm -hmm. I don't like going that long without seeing your beautiful face, Jacob. I know the last two weeks we've done the old Discord thing for sure. Because two weeks ago you were at Preston's, right? Uh, that's or correct. That three weeks ago. Uh, oh, that that was two weeks ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure the week prior to that, we did it in on location. Okay. So yeah, it's good to be back. Um, it looks a little more presentable, obviously being on video again here on YouTube. Hopefully you guys are here to tune in on YouTube this week because, uh, we enjoy talking to you in the comments below. Love to hear from you, Jacob, in regard to you, I hate going weeks without staring into those crystal blue eyes of pure ecstasy. And, uh, of course, appreciating your just fabulous physique. <laughs> it is truly a pleasure to behold, and I appreciate you taking the time to be here with me today. Oh, thank you for having me here. I always, uh, I always enjoy you welcoming, welcoming, welcoming me into your home. That was hard to get out. Jacob, you're always welcome, and honestly, I'd prefer if you'd stay as often as possible. I wish I could. Yeah, I know. You're but a busy yeah. man. Life just somehow gets in the way all the time, you know? Like, I wish I could just do nothing all the time, but, you know. All right. Just not a good way to live. Totally. Right? Well, but, uh, speaking of life, Jacob, uh, for, forgive me if I shouldn't mention this in the podcast. You can just cut it off okay. if I shouldn't. Uh, but you have a date this evening, correct? I do. That's very exciting. That's the plan, yeah. Very cool. Dating is uh, exciting. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Especially when it's a, a, a new horizon, a new odyssey to go on with sure. uh, someone new you're just getting to know. It's an exciting feeling. Yeah. For sure. I enjoy meeting new people. So. Then you date them for four years like Casey and I, and we just want to kill each other. <laughs> We love each other, but a circle we want to life. stab each other in the eyes at all times. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do with Casey is when we're hugging goodbye somewhere, like yesterday, for example. We're like, oh, you know, uh, you're beautiful. You're talented. I love you so much. Hope you have a great day, and I'm going to kill you in your sleep very soon. Yeah. <laughs> we always say That's something, something like... something you both do. <laughs> super violent to each other, just out of nowhere. <laughs> I'd just be sitting in silence for 20 minutes straight, and it's just across the room and be like... I'm going to kill you tonight. Maybe that's what I'm, I need to I'm do when, shoot I you meet, in the head. when I meet this chick tonight. I should yeah. go like, hey. Look, we need to get great. to the point where we're threatening to kill each other in violent ways, like barbaric ways. And she's like, what? She may be into it. Then I never see her again. Yeah, that could be the end of it. But uh, or, or she's into it. Right, right. So you met this girl in Bumble? Yes. That's cool. Well, yeah. uh, I know we all wish you the best. I hope it goes well, and I'm excited to hear about how the date goes. Yeah, I will. Cool. I'll have to let you know. <laughs> that's great, man. Uh, in my life, uh, good news. I'm feeling great right now, physically, because mm. obviously, uh, we, it, it's what's hilarious. We recorded the previous episode, I think, two days ago. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. So, Wait, uh, no, three, it was Wednesday. Three days ago. Yeah, three days ago, which is no time at all to kind of recuperate for the next one. But there's actually surprisingly a handful of decent news stories to discuss. But yeah. you may recall if you listened to the previous episode, or maybe you're catching up at this point, because these are coming out relatively back to back, that uh, I recently had... My appendix removed. It was last Saturday. It was, we're recording this on a Saturday, right? It was exactly yes, a week ago. Saturday. About three hours from now, a week ago, I had it removed. So uh, I was still feeling pretty rough on Wednesday. Or, yeah, it was Wednesday when we recorded. And, uh, which is weird because the following few days, these past couple of days, I felt just amazing. I have had, I mean, knock on wood, I mean, there's no really wood around, but thank the Lord I've recovered miraculously quickly. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm not 100%, obviously, but I feel very good for having my insides rummage through a week yeah. ago. So that Thursday when you went to class, the day after we recorded, mm -hmm. you felt better? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still hurt a little bit that day, and it definitely, uh, I mean, I was on my feet all day, so that kind of sucked, but it's almost I mean, like I, it's almost, general. it's almost like I worked out the kinks by walking around all day that day. I also okay. dumped my brains out, because the nice. uh, painkillers that put you on the really heavily, uh, and, or the intense painkillers uh, will constipate you mm. to the point where you're just ready to erupt yeah. later on. That sounds great. So my mom put me on laxatives for two days. Let me tell you what, Jacob, those are violent oh, yeah. when they kick in, <laughs> in a good way. Like yeah. it was uh, very relieving. Mm -hmm. So I know that doesn't really mean anything to anyone, but it was exciting for me. Sure, just gross. When you're backed out. up for four or five days and you just dump your life away. Mm. I mean, I'm talking, I could have, I could have filled a crock pot with my... Yeah. With my waist. It's like eating a crock pot of Taco Bell. Exactly. Yeah. And then it just, you know. So um, I was uh, quite uh, ex excited about that moment for yeah. sure. 
So, so let me cool. ask you this. I just mentioned Taco Bell. Have mm-hmm. you had the beefy crunch burrito? Oh, yeah, I've had it twice. Me too. I wish I'd had it about 10 times now, but I haven't been back in a while. Mm-hmm. I would have had it had I not had surgery, but I'm thinking, if not tonight, probably sometime this week. Before the weekend sets sail, I'm yeah. going to have that beefy crunch Wait, what burrito do you mean, again. Sets sail? When it, I'm, I'm just trying to be what a little it? metaphorical here. Instead, instead of, until it ends, okay. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have um, a beefy crunch burrito. So maybe, maybe me too. I don't know. There's something I want to preface this episode with as well. I felt like okay. a total asshole upon editing the previous episode because obviously I wasn't feeling very well in the previous one. So I was a little more negative than I think I usually am, usually am about certain things. And uh, I want to wholeheartedly retract my statements regarding Assassin's Creed Odyssey in the previous episode. I mentioned this on Discord, but for those of you who either aren't on Discord or haven't seen what I said. You should be, by the way. Yeah. It's a great place. Yeah, yeah, Discord's and, and awesome. And we're there too. Yeah, we encourage you to uh, at least stop by and say hello. We yeah, have a, you should join and never leave. We have a small but thriving community on there, and we have a great time mm-hmm. at all times. So, um, but it's anyway, great Odyssey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I said like, oh, I don't, I don't really get the hype, and it. it's got a bit of jank to it, and blah 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 blah. But um, I take back what I said, Jacob, because it is mm-hmm. turned out to be quite awesome. Yeah. So far, yeah, I'm really, really getting into it. Um, I, I don't want to say too much because I, I risk breaking embargo. Although when this episode goes live, embargo lifts. I think uh, like two p.m. our time or something like that, Eastern. Yeah, well, this will be. So I can't I can't go into too much detail, but I will say I'm I'm really liking a lot of what I'm playing, and uh, I think the reason why I love it so much is because it feels like what was great about Origins, which I can't int- I can't attest to the entirety of because I only played about twenty five percent of that game, mm-hmm. crossed with what I loved about Black Flag, which had to do with a lot of the naval combat and the uh, open world exploration on your ship and your crew and the shanties and everything. So it feels like what I loved about Origins and Black Flag mixed, uh, to say the least for now. And Sounds I'll, incredible. Yeah, I'll go into more detail of next episode when uh, everyone's kind of got their hands on it, who wants to play it and everything. But uh, Does it come out this week? It comes out Friday, October, October okay, 5th. Cool. So yeah, to those of you who are excited, you have every right to be because even coming from someone who is my uh adoration of assassin's creed has certainly dwindled in the past several years but i still do enjoy it and, and this one especially is outstanding so far so i think you have a, a lot to be excited about and every right to be so forgive me for being a douchebag last episode a very gotcha. very pretty by the way on ps4 pro mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. nice so I assume that's what your review copy was, PS4? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm providing just video coverage for COG. Uh, a lot of uh, just like little mini gameplay videos, but I'm also working on a, on a feature called... I, I, my list keeps growing. Originally, originally I was just going to do five. It's going to be called like five awesome features in Assassin's Creed Odyssey that really stuck out to me, but it's turned mm-hmm. into like seven or eight. So really, really cool stuff in there. I'm excited to talk about it. Mm-hmm. That video will probably be out Tuesday or Wednesday. Nice. So yeah. Fun times ahead. What what an exciting time to just be playing games. We had Spider Man, Blackout's coming soon. I know we're excited about that. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. I think people are really gonna like it. Uh, Red Dead. Red Dead. Dude, I, I'm I'm gonna be honest, Jacob. I'm I'm physically getting jittery for Red Dead. <laughs> I'm that excited for it. Yeah. Just all the information. Red Dead just keeps slipping out onto Twitter. Like the mm-hmm. wildlife, like over two hundred. Uh, species of animals and creatures yeah. to hunt and interact with and like even the cat that ate uh what was it like a rat or something or whatever yeah. it had in its mouth like a bird yeah. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> so even this it's all those little details that like we were talking about last week that are just culminating into this unbelievably immersive experience yeah i'm i'm super excited too i mean it's i've really been itching to play a open world game right now in terms of just like an rpg mm-hmm. genre and uh I like I'm I'm also getting super excited because it's I haven't played a game like that probably since God I want to say uh, I don't even know dude um, Zelda maybe <laughs> Zel Zoraldo Zoraldo you know what uh, meme I'm loving right now is the one yes. with uh, what's his name uh, Key and Peel I get them mixed up I don't know if I've seen this one it's Peel it's the one with these sweating Peel's the one who directed Get Out right. Yes. Yeah. He uh that that clip when he plays Obama and he's shaking all the politicians' hands and yeah. people have made different ones where it's like uh I can't remember what the first one I saw was, but I saw one last night where it's all the Zelda games that have ever come out. And it was, yeah. and I haven't played all the Zelda games, but that meme is just so hilarious to me. I haven't seen this. And of course I can relate to like the Majora's Mask one and Ocarina, uh Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild in particular. But it is hilarious. I'll try to find one to you and show it to you. He just walks around either shaking people's hands or blowing them off or giving them hugs and everything. It's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, that's 
been really funny this past week. Yeah. Um, what have you been playing in these past couple of days since we last spoke? Not really much since we last spoke. I yeah. haven't really been playing a lot of games the last couple of days. Okay. Honestly. What yeah. about you? I've been besides Odyssey. I've exclusively been playing Odyssey. Gotcha. Yeah. I want to get back to Hunt Showdown's uh, new update came out again, two point four. Yeah. What did they add? Uh it's not not too many gameplay updates. It was primarily a uh um performance update. Mm -hmm. So they give you significantly more options uh as far as your display and CPU and, and everything is concerned and resolution. So it used to be pretty simple, just low, medium, or high across the board but now it's it goes in depth and you can change like textures and lighting and all these other little details um at different levels to kind of fine-tune your experience so mm -hmm. pretty cool thank the lord i can play everything cranked out in max and not have to worry about any of that but uh for players who have uh, older gpus and stuff and cpus it really helps them out so it's yeah. pretty cool nice yeah don't worry, I'm not going to talk about Hunt Showdown for more than 30 seconds. Yeah, I welcome it. I don't really yeah. care. <laughs> That's cool, man. Anything I want else you to going talk on? about what you enjoy here. I'm glad to hear. I I, had, I would hope you do the same. Yeah, I do. I always do. Yeah. But uh, I don't really have anything to add since last podcast. I mean, Me neither. <laughs> it was such short notice. I've just been busy, honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have anything that's going on. Preston is busy helping his uncle move today, so we couldn't be with us again, unfortunately. Mm. But he should be back next week. Mm. That's a very light should let's not promise anything but yeah. he might be back next week maybe we'll see he's a, he's an idiot anyway so we don't need him here <laughs> exactly but we'll see yeah. time will tell as usual mm -hmm. and uh it's a miracle this is happening as usual but i'm glad we're together yeah and I'm glad everything's falling into line today yeah it is everything's going everything well. i have plenty of time before work i don't feel rushed we actually have notes prepared for the first time while i actually had time to prepare them yeah so it should be a smooth sailing you want to jump in yeah okay. i'd love to we should, we should tell the people what this is. Yeah, this is, is the It's Obvious podcast, like I mentioned at the uh, very beginning of the episode. Mm -hmm. But um, welcome. If you're a new listener, we uh, are glad you're here. This podcast is available on here on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Audio Boom, and several other services that are relatively insignificant to me. <laughs> I don't think many people <laughs> use them, but they're out there. I think if you Google It's Obvious Gaming Podcast or It's Obvious Podcast, it'll pop up in several places. So yeah, wherever you prefer to listen, it is available to you. And we do the YouTube, uh, the YouTube version just to have obviously another platform. YouTube is our home base uh, as far as our content is concerned. And uh, we encourage you to comment down below so we can track a bit better on the old tubes and continue to grow there. And uh, we do Twitch stream. We'll talk about that stuff at the end, though. Mm. But we do a lot of stuff here kind of sporadically at the moment, but we've been very consistent in the past, and we're going to do our best to uh, reach that point again. I want to find... Sorry to interrupt you, but I want to say this before I forget it. I want to find more ways for us to do Let's Plays again. Me too, because I... I uh, do Let's Plays. <laughs> I've every it. time I think about like our, our Resident Evil stuff, I'm like, we really had a ton of fun with those. Yeah. I still really admire that series. Are there any like scary games coming out soon? Uh, I know Halloween, the movie's coming out. Scary Is games. Is it like some shitty movie tie-in game I don't that's coming out? I don't think so. Not that I know of, unless mm -hmm. I'm I'm blinking hard right now. Yeah. I, no, none it might be fun to, to do a couple Resident Let's Plays. Yeah, maybe that'd be kind of fun. I, th I think we all are excited to play that ourselves, though. Yeah. But uh, you still played Resident Evil 7 despite the Let's Play, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, I, well, we no. shared that. We played back and forth, didn't yeah. we? So, okay. I, I wouldn't mind doing that with two. If we wanted to do I think that. it'd be pretty cool. We should do that. I wouldn't have to buy it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try to do that. Okay. That'd be great. Let's put a pin in it. I noticed we, we, we grew pretty steadily when we were doing Let's Plays too. Mm -hmm. So Steady flow of content. Mm -hmm. I also like our ones where we're just playing a game and I'm just recording it. We're not really worried about doing anything specific for a Let's Play. I think those yeah. really turn out well. So I think you can count on a lot of hilarious uh, blackout videos from us this fall. Yeah. We definitely need to make it a... Uh a habit to play often so we can definitely hopefully capture some of those moments you know sure. what I, you know what video i can't wait to make i think ign already made one but i think i can do it better where they do a spartan kick montage in assassin's creed that is yeah. not only one of the coolest abilities in the game but one of the funniest things i have ever seen in assassin's yeah. creed because when you upgrade it all the way dude you can launch people just <laughs> so far especially when you hit them off cliffs and everything yeah. my favorite thing to do is when you uh i can't say do this they, in the game do they scream yeah. oh yeah yeah uh, like if you're if you're jumping onto a naval ship and you Spartan kick someone and they fly off the ship into the water, they typically <laughs> drown. It's hilarious. Oh my god! If you kick them off, one of my favorite things to do is I was, I was fighting this uh, pretty high level centaur, uh, yeah, <laughs> leader in this base camp, and I just kept kicking him off this ledge into this pond. He had to crawl back out, and I just kick him off again. <laughs> it was so funny. 
So it's a cool ability. It's like the uh, you've seen that video where the it's like real life. Uh, I think it's either Skyrim or Fallout where they <laughs> they're like acting like the NPCs in the game. Yeah, swing back and they like look up at you and they're speaking like like you're in the first like the the video is in first person but the guy's just speaking to the camera. Yeah, as if he's an NPC. Yeah, that's what that reminds me so. of. Fun times. That was a quite a tangent for our intro here. But you want to jump into the news? What? Is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I was trying to combine what Preston says to saying yes. But hey, man, what's the news? <laughs> Dude, uh, Playground is hiring quite a few uh, developers for their untitled open world RPG or another mystery game we've yet to find out about. It's not entirely specific. Mm. But uh, specifically, 177 new jobs are uh, on the table here That's for insane. people who would potentially like to join their team. And I'd imagine quite a few uh, Telltale employees would be throwing their resume that way. I'd say it would be smart to do so. Um, now, obviously, the rumor is that they're going to be working on the next Fable. And upon getting my hands on Forza Horizon 4, I know they're not even remotely in the same vein, but... I think these are the strengths of Forza Horizon 4 when you're comparing it to the potential of a new Fable game. They understand, at least in the realm of driving around fast cars, how to design an open world that really caters to that gameplay experience. Mm -hmm. So if they have the understanding of how to craft an open world in general that's that effective and that it feels that good to drive around in and it's laid out well in a car game, I imagine they have the same ability to apply that to an open world RPG. And I think yeah, why I'm maybe. really excited is because we've seen studios really redefine themselves recently, specifically with Horizon Zero Dawn, with Guerrilla, uh, Sony Santa Monica with God of War. And I'd like to see Playground really redefine themselves. Not that they need to, because they're killing it with the Forza uh, franchise, but see them redefine themselves with Fable 4 and like really prove to the world just how talented their team is. And I think this will put them, once all these roles are filled, I, I think in, in this article, I don't want to go into too much detail but it says that uh they will be the second largest studio under microsoft's team of uh first party studios who would be number one uh 343 okay so and shortly behind them is like coalition games and stuff so or coalition studio so they uh have quite the the staff yeah, coming that's, on board. that's a lot of jobs at mm -hmm. one time <laughs> so hopefully uh i mean lionhead had a very unique style of humor and, and and gameplay and tone to the fable franchise and i imagine yeah. it's not hard to mimic that but without peter molyneux at the helm which i don't know if that's a good or bad thing anymore <laughs> at this point yeah. but uh without him at the helm i'm interested to see how a new fable will look especially because it's been so think about all the open world rpgs especially medieval rpgs we've played since fable 3 even um notably of course the witcher 3 um how they will tackle how open world rpg experiences have evolved yeah because i mean I, I still still fondly i think very positively of fable 2 there's a lot of stuff i love about that game okay but i'll have to make some big steps to make it really impactful mm -hmm. but i'll be hyped i'm already hyped because we know it's coming we don't know if it's officially playground i think it's safe to assume it's them yeah. but especially if they're hiring this big team i think it, that's full-on fable mode after forza horizon 4 they, they even mentioned i heard in a cogs review actually that I think four is a at least the Horizon series four is gonna be the last one for a little while. Oh really? So I think even more evidence. they might have multiple teams. They might have a team working on motorsport. I don't know what motorsport they're now like six maybe or yeah, seven. It might be seven. No. Maybe it's eight. It may even beyond eight for all I know. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I don't keep up with the car games, obviously. Yeah. But it, they might have a fable team and a and a motorsport team. Yeah. So because motorsports almost like their Madden franchise that happens every couple of years. So. Seems like it, yeah. Well, they they rotate every year, right? Like mm -hmm. They'll do the, the horizon and then, then the motorsport. Horizon. So, um, yeah, that, this is exciting news. Um, I do, agree. do you think it, like this is a new studio making a fa presumably a fable game, right? Right. So, do you think like they can do anything? It's presumably like they could do, they can do they anything could. to make leave their own mark on the franchise. So do they you could. Think they're going to play it safer, or do you think they're more so going to kind of reinvent what fable is? I think it's safe to assume they will uh, satisfy the core fan base because any the core fan base is crucial to any franchise. Yeah, I mean, look at look at what's happened both. to Star Wars with the the, the divide between uh, really. I mean, some hardcore fans love Last Jedi, some most don't. I would say, <laughs> but uh, there's been, there, there, there been a very clear uh, um, split between the fan base that's really obviously affected. Uh, 
the films recently. Not, I wouldn't say from a production standpoint, but uh, like Solo, for example, a lot of people just skipped on that because of the Last yeah. Jedi. I, I actually want to see it. I didn't see it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, you I think it? I think a few of us on Discord too talked about how much we were surprised by it and really enjoyed it. And it's a solid mm-hmm. flick. I mean, it's by no means perfect. It's not like the best Star Wars movie ever, but in terms of just a really fun simple plot line uh, of a story and seeing young han solo was really cool okay so does it do you know if it's available for rental or is it I able to be purchased? i think if it's not already it will be very soon okay because i've seen a lot of ads for it and like deleted scenes popping up on youtube and everything yeah well that might just be because you're watching star wars videos are you watching star wars videos? no i've seen like i think ign shared a deleted scene of of okay. solo yeah i'll have to look into that because i need to see it. it's the only star wars movie that i haven't seen so it's a good film you see it i liked it more than last jedi i'll say that much mm-hmm. so speaking of star wars kathleen kennedy is coming on for three more years she I resigned her contract yeah. so how do you feel about that uh i don't know because i yeah. <laughs> i don't think it's entirely her fault why star wars is wound up in the state it's in i think it's there's multiple factors there mm-hmm. but um, why do you think it's only three years like is that typically how long they sign on their presidents I, or she uh they acquired star wars in 20 uh 12 and she okay. she's renewing it now in 2018. That was a six year contract, three more years. Maybe she's going to see through uh, the trilogy. Yeah, that. I mean, through more. I mean, obviously the the next one comes out next Christmas, or year out, or year from this Christmas. Yeah. So uh, now maybe she'll stick around for one more movie after that. One more uh, solo, not solo movie, but um, what, what do they call them? Like anthology movies. Yeah. A Star Wars story. Yeah. I just thought about this is. Is a the Avengers movie's not coming out this year, right? That already came out earlier this year. Yeah, that come the. I keep forgetting uh, all these movies already came out this year. Yeah, the untitled uh, Avengers four is coming out. Uh, I think in May of next year. Yeah, there's going to be an Avengers film and a star, big listen, the ninth Star Wars film and be star next year. and uh, Spider Man Far From Home next year. Oh my god, I'm so stoked for that. I've seen a lot of pictures Tom Holland's been sharing on uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. and it it takes it's like a school field trip they go on, like oh, I think all through Europe or something. So I think it's kind of cool. We're going to see Spider-Man. So he's going to be in Europe. Yeah, we're going to see That's Spider-Man crazy. in just a, a brand new setting. Yeah. That's cool. Is he going to be in like London? or is there? I'm not sure. I've seen him in Venice and one other place I can't recall. But I think I love the idea of them going on a field trip and him yeah. having to deal with a villain. Like how does he explain the yeah. fact that Spider-Man's where they are <laughs> at all times? <laughs> so there's also a leaked picture of him in a potential stealth suit that he makes. Oh. I think it's pretty cool. What if he just whipped out the Iron Spider suit? Yeah, good movie. Yeah, and Tony Stark swoops in. Yeah. What are you doing? You can't use this. You can't be in all my movies. movies yeah, Tony. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, everyone knows he's going to live because they're filming Far From Home. It'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see how they kind of uh, address the fact that he's basically died and come back to life. Which one's coming first, Avengers or Avengers? Uh, okay, it'll be Avengers. And, I think it's Captain Marvel in March, and then Avengers, and then Spider Man. How'd you feel about that trailer, Captain Marvel? It was all right. It didn't blow my mind, but yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see it. I was already excited just to see it because it's you know it's a Marvel movie. I enjoy mm-hmm. going to see those, but the trailer didn't really do anything for me in particular. Yeah. I, I imagine another trailer or two will, will feel pretty hype for it. I mean, I'm obviously mostly because I don't know much about Captain Marvel. I know very little through a couple of different movie outlets I watch on YouTube. Yeah, but um, she sounds like a really cool character, mm-hmm. and um, obviously she has heavy uh, ties to. Uh, like the the galactic side of Marvel, and yeah, will play a big She's role not in this earth. Yeah, play a, a, a big role in uh, Avengers Four. Mm-hmm. So, and I haven't seen the new Ant Man movie either. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like the first one more, but Ant Man Two is pretty fun. Okay. It's a good time. I just, I just need to catch up a little bit. Every time the the new Avengers movies get closer, I always feel rushed because I'm never caught up on Marvel movies. So I like yeah, like a week or two before the movies come out, I just like rush and watch like two or three movies that I need to. Mm-hmm. I kind of enjoy that experience. It just gets me hyped for Avengers. Yeah. So I'll probably do that when that time comes next year. It's a good idea. But what were we talking about? Like, we were talking about <laughs> Fable and somehow wound up talking about Marvel and Star Wars. <laughs> I shit, can't remember how. Happens, man. Yeah, we're, oh yeah, we're talking about core fan bases. So oh, I think yeah. they will uh, They will hopefully maintain that classic Fable humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to an, to an extent, what the gameplay was like, you know, like general combat and you can get married and have kids and have homes and customize your characters like a good and evil slider. I think it's crucial. I think it's what a lot of people loved about Mass Effect is having like a, a good and evil side. And even in Fallout 4, they left it kind of uh, more of like a, um, what, what's the word? 
I'm looking for. Um, there isn't neutral. like a good inside. It's like a, like a neutral scale that kind of like, they, they're like, you know, if you're being good or evil, they, we don't need a, a bar to tell you that. Yeah. But I think people, in a video game, people like to see that. And that was always reflected in Fable by your appearance. True. Whether you look like a golden angel or just like a pure devil with like horns and everything. So yeah. as long as they have all the, the classic um, features that the original ones do and then build upon that, that'd be their foundation and then build upon it. I think they'll be, yeah, I agree. I would they'll really be in like good that. hands. I, uh, I haven't played too, like a whole lot of games that do that kind of thing where, mm-hmm. you know, your decisions like literally change how like you're viewed or how your character looks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And we'll see if, uh, they drop a blatant Easter egg in there. Like, with Zelda and the Master Cycle Zero, which seems so out of place, it was a lot of fun to use. I wouldn't be surprised if Fable had some crazy mount that was like a, a car of some sort to hark into the Forza. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, this is so exciting to, to think about, Jacob. Let's take a moment of silence to appreciate that a new Fable is coming while I filter out this air. Oh, I can't wait. All right, we're golden. I apologize that we have to do that. The air is uncontrollable. It's set to auto on this home. And it is a, a wind turbine. You would you would hear us talking in a, an airport, essentially, or like right behind an airplane about to take off. Yeah. If I didn't pause to filter that out every week, so is it really that bad. It's bad. Sounds like a wind yeah, the, turbine, especially this mic. It picks up everything. So. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Uh, let's see. The Fallout beta dates, Jacob. They were officially announced this week. They were. Mm-hmm. On Xbox One, uh, you can play it first on Xbox One on That's uh, bullshit October twenty third. And then later uh, on the 30th on PS4 and PC, I will be on PC with Mr. Poobah. Ooh. I'm quite excited to jump in. You going to join us? I might. I, I think, think you should. I might, yeah. I, I, I should, should try, try out with the us. beta. Yeah, imagine, we can, we can probably get a fun video out of the beta. Yeah. We should do it. I, I might not buy the game, but I definitely need to get the beta and see if I like it, I think. Mm-hmm. That would be smart as, as a consumer. Yeah, why not? You, you, like you, you can always cancel smart. your pre-order, can't you? Yeah, I could just switch so. it to another game. Too. Yeah. So, so. I'm going to do it. Awesome. And when is, what are the dates again? Remind uh, me. Uh, 23rd on Xbox One and then for us on PC and uh, PS4 players, October 30th. I might be playing too much Red Dead. We'll yeah. see. Oh yeah, I'll be uh, neck deep in Red Dead for sure. We'll see if I can step away. Yeah. Good luck to all of us in, in that case. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, wait a minute, if I'm going to pre-order on PS or PC. You yeah. do that through Bethesda's launcher on PC. Yeah, but then I couldn't cancel my pre-order because I would have already bought the game. Right. You can always refund it, though. Okay, I can just refund it. Yeah, I imagine for digital purchases, you can do that, too. Okay. I'll, fi- I'll figure it out. Unless you've played it for a certain amount of time. Doesn't Steam have something like that? If you play it for a certain amount of hours, you can't refund it. I don't think it's on Steam. Is it not? I uh, know. Not, I'm not talking about Fallout on Steam. I'm just talking about games in general. Yeah, Is it yeah, like a refund a thing, option like yeah. that? Well, every I think every launcher is different. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know what Bethesda's is like. I'll figure it out. Uh, Sean Layton has commented on crossplay with PS4 and uh, Fortnite and said it wasn't quite as uh, simple as just switching a or flipping a switch. What? Yeah. He said specifically, quote, this quote from Sean Layton, he says, we know this is a want, this is, this is a desire and we want to be able to deliver that in the best way possible. He said during a podcast, now enabling crossplay isn't just about flipping a switch and there you go. It's a very multidimensional kind of attribute or feature. Layton added that uh, added that Sony had to take a look at this deci- decision from both a technical and business point of view, and also to make sure that the customer service for crossplay feature was going to be effective. He goes on to say it was rather uh, ordinal. They have to go in certain order to get them all set up. He explained. Layton also said that the crossplay beta test for Fortnite is so far so good. And he goes on to say uh, they asked him about you know Bethesda's outright this blatantly called out Sony in regards to denying crossplay for Fallout seventy six. And Layden says that right now they're waiting to see how it goes with Fortnite. And if it's a success, which he said, so far so good, they will definitely uh, implement this crossplay into additional games going forward. Okay. So I think it's safe to assume if um, Fortnite goes as well as it seems to be going, I think it's uh, okay to believe that they'll add it to 76 at some point. Sure. Uh, well, hopefully that, that's a, to very, a lot of games. Yeah, that's a very obvious one to add it to, but multiple games going forward. So that's good that yeah. Sony's finally uh, caving on very strict demand from the community. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> the world seeing, for that matter. Yeah, it's interesting seeing how like they feel like it was a month ago where they put out that statement where like they weren't interested in putting crossplay on PS4. Like they just weren't interested at all. And now like now we're here where they're actually doing things and they're they're making crossplay a thing on for at least for Fortnite. So right. 
it's just crazy seeing like i wonder what happened like i wonder what the discussions were like and why they had that change of heart yeah um you know obviously there's a lot of demand for it and uh i'm sure they wanted to stick to their guns for a while sure and i, I kind of admired that <laughs> but yeah. I, of course i want crossplay i don't I, it's a great feature to have but i almost admired the fact that they're willing to stick to their guns on that one mm -hmm. but yeah, obviously he said we had to figure it out from a business and technical standpoint and uh, how they can actually benefit from that. And I think at the moment it's primarily just community satisfaction <laughs> that they're benefiting from yeah. and also just enabling people to play with their buddies and other consoles and stuff. Goodwill does go a long way. Yeah. While we're on the topic of uh, Fortnite real quick, I'll talk about the PSX situation in a second. But have you seen some of the stuff that's included in Season 6, six of uh, Battle Royale and Fortnite? You mean like aesthetically or how the maps change? Yeah, just all that stuff. A bit, yeah. Yeah, I kind of put some bullet points that I just thought were, this is why I totally get the appeal of that game. Oh, it, yeah. Again, I don't really want to jump back into it and play it, but it still is awesome to behold. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's crazy like to think like they have this, this one map and they just keep changing like a couple things every season. Then yeah. they'll add new like cosmetics and that's it. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll like add new like, items to use and that's it. And like people yeah. love it. Yeah, there's more than a hundred new new cosmetic rewards. There's a hundred new ones. More than. Jeez. Yeah, man. and some of the big ones are backpack pets. Like I saw the picture of like a dragon, a, a dog mm -hmm. in your backpack. That's amazing. That's brilliant. <laughs> they have all those cool Halloween skins. I mean, the season's called Darkness Rises. I think it's primarily catered towards Halloween season. Mm -hmm. But I love the werewolf skin. I, I thought it was super one, yeah. cool. I dig that a lot. Uh, there's the floating spooky castle. Oh. oh, there's just a castle. It's actually a former Loot Lake. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, there's there it's not there's a floating island, excuse me, but there's also the spooky castle to explore. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, maybe that's different. Yeah, like the, the floating island literally rose out of Loot Lake. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh and there's also shadow stones which uh grant you the ability to be a little more acrobatic and you turn invisible. Yeah. Uh and you're totally invisible to players around you, but you can't fire at them. So it's almost like an evasive tool you have as a consumable. Uh, I was and just to get the jump on people. On their Twitter, they they mentioned that they took those out. Recently. Yeah, because I said there's like a bug going on or yeah. something. So they're not working as intended or something. Yeah, I, I imagine people can exploit the hell out of those and really yeah. piss people off. Like, I'd be so annoyed if I'm hanging out somewhere. I mean, I, I mean, I guess it helps to be on the move at all times uh, for the most part. But if you're just hanging out with a buddy, like building something, and someone just pops up behind you and blows you up because yeah. they had a shadow stone. Do, do you follow a lot of... Do you use Twitter a lot, Garrett? Um. Uh. Yeah, I'm on there. I, I never tweet, but I'm on there a lot. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I I primarily use Twitter to just follow a bunch of studios. Yeah. Like not 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 exclusively, but mm -hmm. I do that just so that I feel like I'm more informed about things. Totally. Like even if I don't play Fortnite, I still follow their their mm -hmm. page just to. I don't know if they do release something that I think mm -hmm. is really cool. I'm gonna jump in. So I just like to be in the loop. I guess. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I use Twitter primarily for news, and I'm just bombarded with political. Uh, mumbo jumbo and and, ra uh, ravenous Flynn. people arguing with each other just 24-7 yeah. I'm like oh everyone's talking about the court case yeah even when I just want to watch or look at video game stuff I'm just plagued with all that garbage 24-7 <laughs> so frustrating uh, but the shadow stones uh, like I always like the idea of like oh I can be stealthy and invisible and sneak up on people but at the end of the day gameplay wise I've never even really enjoyed invisibility in any game I've ever played Okay. Even when games give you the ability, like I think in Assassin's Creed, there's an ability you can turn invisible for five seconds. I'm like, who Whoa. cares? Like I've never, even in Halo, I never understood what, what the appeal, I, I get it in, in a single player sense, like the uh, Covenant be able to cloak themselves and get the drop on Spartans and, and Marines and stuff. But in multiplayer, I never understood the appeal of being invisible. It just pissed everyone off. I didn't feel cool too when I was invisible because no one can see me. I'm just getting free you kills. You never played a rogue in WoW then. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, it makes sense too. In like MMO, you can get a drop on all your enemies. Exactly. That's I think why it's it, so satisfying. I, think, I know it's an MMO, but speaking of like PvP or PvE, I think it makes sense for PvE, but in multiplayer, I think it's so stupid. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> so there, there were, there's definitely been times like throughout WoW's life where you can literally like stun lock a guy and just kill him before he can even do anything. Right. Before he even gains control of his character. So. <laughs> Kind of silly, but we'll see if they, they work out the kinks of the Shadow Stones. Maybe there's like three of them on the map. Maybe they're very rare. Okay. Or maybe we don't see them again. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, they may be gone because they, they have scrapped some stuff in the past. They may mm -hmm. throw them into the Fortnite vault, as they call yeah, it. I think they scrapped the jetpack and that never came back, mm -hmm. right? So. so a couple of weapons in their old vault, too. Mm -hmm. um, what were we talking about? Uh, Fortnite. Yeah, we're talking about Fortnite. Uh, there is no PlayStation experience this year. So How do you feel about that? I don't know if it was technically canceled. It's just not occurring. I think I'm fine with it. Um, I, I think even last year they didn't even really need it because it felt kind of forced to me. A lot of the stuff they talked about and just kind of some 
rather, I wouldn't say mediocre from a presentation standpoint, but as far as information is concerned, it was just kind of bland. Yeah. Well, it was, it wasn't even like reveals last year, yeah. right? It was just a discussion mm -hmm. on stage. I think this, I think PlayStation, PlayStation experience would thrive as like a, like a biannual type conference where it happens every two to three years Okay, yeah. to really be impactful. And, um, he said, Sean Layden commented on that as well and said that, uh, obviously the focus for 2019 that our confirmed 2019 titles are days gone and, uh, dreams. I think it's safe to assume that last of us is going to land late next year, probably. Maybe. But, um, yeah, that's the focus for now. He said there just really wasn't a whole lot to, to go over, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, I think it's probably good they don't do it every year. It kind of seems like they don't have enough games to announce every single year. I mean, at this point, we've kind of gone through all of, like their big AAA games. Not that PSX is exclusively about the big AAA that they, you know, that they release. Because obviously, it's a show for all the smaller, you know, studios making Sony games. But uh, is it is a? Uh, I assume Paris Games Week will still be a thing. Yeah, probably. So, so maybe they have a big, bigger presence there again this year, like they did last year. I'm sure Sony will be there, but it won't be like PlayStation Experience. Like, cause they, right. I think they just had uh, play, was PlayStation PlayStation Experience just in Paris. It wasn't part no, of Paris it, Games Week. It was no, it was two separate things. Okay, yeah. Because like the year. Two oh, years, I remember. Two years I remember ago. now because they 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 saved the bulk of their announcements and news for Paris Games mm -hmm. Week, and that's why PlayStation Experience is pretty minimal. Yeah. So maybe so. there's too much going on there, so they're taking a break from PSX. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Yeah, or maybe they're just going to be low presence at Paris Games Week too. I don't. I don't really know. <laughs> Me neither. All we can do is speculate. Yeah. Um, Kingdom Hearts three, my friend. Actually, oh, before we talk about that, language. yeah, before we talk about that, uh, I meant to say The Last of Us Part two had a poster released of Joel and a wolf. It's like concept art. It's like mm -hmm. a grayscale poster. Um, he's playing an acoustic guitar. It almost looks like a, an artistic type of promotional piece but it doesn't it doesn't look like something that would technically be in game i don't know if it will be or not because mm -hmm. i don't know if it's concept art i think it's just a, a, like an art it's just art of joel yeah. do you have a picture of it uh i don't have or the picture look it up really quick yeah but well, what would i uh, it, it's for? it's almost like a stylized version though it doesn't look like an actual like the actual design of him in the game so we still don't know what he looks like or what he'll be up to but there's i think um naughty dog has stated you'll have uh, Ellie has her own companion in the game, and I maybe Joel teams up with this wolf, or maybe she teams up the wolf. I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's kind of cool. It's a cool image. They released it on Outbreak Day along with one of the songs off the soundtrack called "Cycles." Yeah, by Gustavo Centolala. Oh, <laughs> Centeolala. You definitely didn't butcher that. That's pretty close. Santo Alala. Yeah. And it's a good track. I mean, it sounds exactly like Last of Us music. Yeah. But as the same guy who came out on stage for whatever reason at E3 and played his banjo or his guitar or whatever he played. So kind yeah, of a man. cool intro, I That's guess. Cool. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that game yet. Last it's of like, Us Part 2? It's like I'm excited to play it, obviously, because I want to mm -hmm. continue that story. But yeah, I don't know. The hype's not really there yet for me. Yeah, I'm not hyped either. Again, what we saw from E3 was gorgeous. I mean, there's no denying that. Incredible animations, too. Uh, and I, I don't doubt Naughty Dog at all, whether it's we're talking about gameplay or story. I trust them wholeheartedly. So I'm sure, sure they they are speaking the truth when they say if they didn't have a good story to tell, they wouldn't tell it. Of course. So I believe in Naughty Dog. Same. I believe in Harvey Dent. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Oh, the opening the, the opening theme song, which is crucial in a Kingdom Hearts game, as we know. Oh, yeah. Um, is a cross between the original composer for the first two games and Skrillex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skrillex. I don't know how this is going to go. So the opening theme is called Face My Fears. It's a collaboration between Grammy Award winning artist Skrillex and longtime series theme musician uh, Utada Ikaru or Hikaru, mm -hmm. possibly. Not only that, producer Pooh Bear, Pooh Bear himself, uh, who co-wrote many of Justin Bieber's hits, also worked on the track. Apparently, Kingdom Hearts fan Skrillex intended to collaborate with uh, Hikaru, or Hikaru, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, to remix Don't Think Twice, which is a previously revealed Kingdom Hearts 3 track. But their music evolved into a new, a new track, which, be, will, which will be released in January, or released January 18th, 2019, along with Don't Think Twice. I'm excited. So, uh, as long as there isn't any dubstep in it, I'm fine. Yeah, that's exactly what my thoughts were. If there's any dubstep in it, it's going to be a little weird, I think. Yeah, and whenever but... I even look at the name Skrillex, all I hear is like, So, um, 
So uh, as long as that isn't in the the intro, I'm fine. We got to maintain that classic, beautiful, Mm -hmm. tear jerking music in Kingdom Hearts. Yep. I echo your thoughts. Exactly. I'll cry. I'm, I'm probably going to cry. Not really, Just hearing the song? Yeah, maybe not at the beginning, but at the end, it'll probably make me cry. Oh, you mean at the end of the game? I shed a tear at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, I still think that's one of the most beautiful video game endings I've ever seen. Yeah, it's great. One of the happiest, too. Yeah. Great series. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what I'm most excited for, like, just going into the end of the year. Like, I just want to play that game. Sucks it's not coming out this year. I know. It's At least it has a release date, and it's presumably coming out, mm-hmm. you know? Haven't been able to say that for many years. Oh, uh, just kidding. We're delaying it again. No. Um, yeah, it's delaying uh, it indefinitely. It'll be here before we know it. Same so. month as Resident Evil 2. It's going to mm-hmm. be a busy month. Very busy. Very, is, uh, is RE2 very coming bu- out before that? Uh, I think it is. What's the date for RE2 again? Let me look it up. I think yeah, it's February or ja- no, it's January. It's January. Yeah, they're both January. Resident Evil. I might have them both in my two. calendar. Remake release date. Uh, that's 25th as Resident Evil. Kingdom Hearts is, is that the 19th? Like that song or no? 19th is a Saturday, so I don't no. think so. Kingdom Hearts 3. I can't, there's so many release dates Maybe floating around date. that I can't remember all of them. Kingdom Hearts 3 release date. 29th. Is that the same day? That's a Tuesday the week after. Okay. Yeah, like 25th uh-huh. is the Friday before. Okay, yeah, I see that. Cool. So you're going to have to burn through RE2. In a weekend, you ready to do that? Uh, I won't be capable, I know for a fact. So I'll be swapping between the two. Okay. We'll do some Let's Play content for Kingdom Hearts, of course. It's going to be a good month, man. Yeah. Good first half of the year, too. I think we have uh, Metro and uh, Metro Days Gone and Anthem all releasing on the same day, along with two or three other games all in that same day in February. (laughs) Ridiculous. Someone's going to move. I'm calling Days Gone on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. They're the most threatened, I think. I'm still going to be wanting to play Smash at that point, too. Yeah, I imagine. Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting Smash is coming out this year. And I already know that I'm going to love the hell out of Red Dead. Mm-hmm. I'll probably still be jumping into that to do something. I hope I'm done with Red Dead at that point. I don't know. Maybe Red Dead Online I think, I think really it good. will be done, obviously, with the, the campaign, but we may fall in love with Red Dead Online for all we know. That's what kills me, though, because it's not going to be on PC. Like That's where I want to play an online game is PC. I get that. But it, it's kind of like what I did with uh, GTA Online. I, I mean, I don't play it consistently, but I jump back in on PC when I... Bought it and uh, had some fun online still, in spite yeah. of playing a lot of it on PS4. Yeah. So. Yeah, dude. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 is going to run at a checkerboarded 4K resolution at 60 FPS on PS4 Pro. Solid. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a cool little bite-sized news headline. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. And by that point, I'll have a PS4 Pro, mm-hmm. my Kingdom Hearts 3 edition. I'm such an uninformed and inexperienced Devil May Cry fan, but that game just looks so damn cool. It looks fun. And what I played at uh, PAX West was awesome. It felt so good to play. Mm-hmm. So I'm hyped for it, man. I don't. I know a lot of uh, like hard, hardcore fans of the franchise would probably be appalled by that, but uh, I would hope as a fan of something, I always encourage newcomers. Like when I'm a hardcore Hunt Showdown fan, I always get excited when people tell me they're going to jump in and play it. I'm not like, what the hell? I've been here since the beginning. What the hell, you noob? Yeah. So if you guys yeah, have been longtime I'm, fans of Devil May Cry, uh, got a new fan jumping in. Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. I've never even played any of the other games. Never wanted to, really, but I'm definitely excited for this one. Yeah. Does this game have a bandwagon trailing behind it? Probably, but uh, I am aboard and happy to, do, uh, to be there. So <laughs> should be a good time. I meant to say while well, we mentioned... Uh, Red Dead a couple times this episode. The install is 105 gigabytes on PS4. Yeah, that's big. That's hefty. I think it's <laughs> the biggest I'm have to ever some for a console game. Biggest ever for a console yeah. game. So yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's a lot of gigs. I, I almost, I'm i very happy to hear that. It just goes to show how massive that game is. It's a lot of, a lot of meat so. in that pie. Oh, yeah. It's uh, very meaty. Very, very meaty. Mm. Just considering there's 200 plus species in the game alone, that small fact... There's a lot to, to behold, so. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other night. This is completely off topic and random, but it just popped into my mind again. Um, how do you eat pizza, Garrett, like on a regular basis? Do you eat it with a fork? Do you cut it up with a fork? Do you eat it regularly, like picking it up and just eating it? Or do you pick it up and you fold it into like a taco and eat it? Uh, I what, what's your ju- Spoon, what's, bro. Spoon. Sp- oh, I, I grind it spoon. in a blender and then I consume it in a bowl with a spoon. I like to put my, I like to grind it and put it in a shaker cup, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, you're shaking or stirring it. like a margarita or something. Yeah, yeah. 
I'll take my pizza shaken, not stirred, please. <laughs> With a big a bit of Parmesan in there, too. Ugh. That's disgusting. Yeah. Let's get that image out of our heads. Um, no, but in reality, if the pizza is so hot that the, the ingredients fall off it when I pick it up. Now, you can fold it up, but if I'm talking about like it's scorchingly hot, I will start with a fork and nibble away at it. And when it's cooled down a bit, I will pick it up and eat also, it like a normal human being. Also, a big deep dish, you kind of need to use a fork. You know? Yeah. But it's like you were saying, it's sloppy, and mm -hmm. but it's still good. You know? Yeah. But 99% of the time, I am picking it up and eating it. Okay. Now, I do like when I get about halfway through it to fold it, sort of like into a calzone shape and yeah. consume it that See, way. See, I've, ne I've never done the whole you know, fold <laughs> like thing. Consume the slice of pizza in a calzone type form. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was, I don't know. I was watching someone eat pizza on YouTube or something. I was like, I've never eaten pizza like that. Like, why don't, why don't I fold it like that? I don't know. Well, you <laughs> it should just try popped it. into my head. Why are you watching someone eat pizza? Was like on a uh, Let's Play or something? No, it was just... I just like watching guys eat pizza, man. That's what I'm into. I, I honestly couldn't tell you what I was watching. I was just deep into the YouTube trending tab, probably, and just mm. happened to stumble upon someone eating some pizza somewhere. Nice. Uh, oh, I think it was like... Oh, here's what it was. It was this guy named uh, Mike Chin. Have you ever heard of Mike Chin? I've heard that name. He eats a lot of food on YouTube. Like That's what he does. He just eats. And... uh like he was at New York and he was just eating a bunch of popular New York pizza places. Ah, and, cool. Uh, yeah. I think one of I my favorite missions in Spider-Man had to do with all those pizza places. Yeah. That was awesome. I haven't done that yet. Oh, you haven't? Man, you are really behind in that game. I know. Holy crap. I, I want to sit down and play like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch the Falcons and then I'm just playing Spider-Man the rest of the day. That's a good idea. Yeah. I need to catch up. I think I might do another web swing video for COG because... Uh, those just keep killing it, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like every single one I've done, like I, like I said before we started the podcast, has at the very least 100,000 views. Yeah. So, and the one I did most recently has jumped like 40,000 views in the last two days. So it's like moving quicker than it has been since That's I put so it out. Weird. <laughs> so, uh, the game's been out for like three yeah, weeks. Yeah, I might do another one. So there's only some, I think the only thing left to do with Web Swing is just finding cool spots to do nice little runs with like a like a nice little 20 to 30 second sequence of cool tricks and flips through certain parts of the city so i just got to find some more cool spots to do that you should do one of those on our channel i'd like to but i think cog has me kind of tied down to the uh the web swing videos yes yeah. <laughs> um I, I could i'll do one for our channel too I'm, I'm reserving one for our channel when they give us the option to turn off the hud i'm going to call it cinematic web swinging where i unlock mm. the camera control the camera and have no hud on the screen i'm going to make it like a 21 by 9 aspect ratio with like some cool filters and stuff to make Which it look like a film really cool yeah i'm gonna make it really badass so i'm reserving that video for our channel but i think like a general like stunts and stuff for, I'll, I'll do for cog so i have some some very specific ideas for our cover not i wouldn't say coverage but any spider-man videos we do i know by the time I do these, it'll have dwindled the biggest red dead will been out and everything by then. But uh, I have a couple cool ideas I'm going to do with Spider-Man. Hmm. So notably that one. No one steal my idea, please. I just revealed that to the world. <laughs> I'm sure other people have had a similar idea, but I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you want to talk about some uh, or answer some community questions? Yeah, man. Let's fucking do it. Let's fucking do it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your continued support of this podcast and uh, your supply of community questions week in and week out. Please... We ask you with all of our hearts to keep them coming. Even if it's something as simple as, hey, man, how do you like your eggs in the morning? We're going to answer it. I have and an answer for that. Until we can uh, get to Ask IOG again, we're going to start answering some more uh, random questions on the episodes just to, to keep you guys from waiting too long. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. It'll just... That'd be funner to talk about. Just yeah, it really mixes too. things up at the end. So anything you can throw at us, please do so in one of three places. You can email us at itsobviousgaming at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at obvious underscore gaming or submit your questions in the Ask IOG section of our Discord channel. Now, all that being said, always include the hashtag Ask IOG so that we know you're, you're, uh, you want your question right on the show. If you don't include it, I'm just going to answer you wherever you supply it because I don't know that you want yes. it on the show. The hashtag is essential. Yeah. Ask Eog, we like to say. Yes. All that out of the way, let's jump into the first one, Jacob. Okay. Comes from Alec Walker. Oh. Alec says, hi, guys. Garrett, I hope you're better. Please don't die. Alec, so far, so good, unless I croak immediately after this episode ends. I mean, ideally, or not ideally, but realistically, it could happen. <laughs> ideally, <laughs> ideally, you will, you will die, die as soon <laughs> as possible. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I live to fight another day. Hmm. I'm good for now, though. Thank you for checking in. You mentioned Metal Gear Solid Five which we did last episode. Mm -hmm. I loved it until you uh, left the desert area. After fighting the Rex and Skullface passing it went down... Oh, uh, sorry. After fighting the Rex and Skullface passing it went downhill. 
What games have you played that you suddenly lose interest in halfway through, whether by story or changing gameplay? That's I, I didn't read this all the way through. I just grabbed it. That's an excellent question. Yeah. One I have to think about for a minute. <laughs> I actually, like, I agree with him in Metal Gear Solid Five. Like, that's kind of when I stopped playing. I forgot like I forgot desert. that you go to, like, the jungle after yeah. that. I didn't, yeah. I, don't, I, I prefer I didn't like the, the desert. Jungle. Yeah. I don't know. I, if I'm not mistaken, I, oh, I remember now. I remember what the jungle was like. I get that. I didn't. I didn't lose interest, but I definitely preferred the desert over the jungle area. Yeah, I think you were in Africa, right? Yeah, you go to Africa. So, mm-hmm. I too preferred the desert. I need so. to read this question again. Mm-hmm. Let me think of a game. Let me look at my posters here. <laughs> um, dude. Um, I know there have been games in the past that I feel that way. Yeah, you, know, you didn't finish Andromeda, right? Would that be a good answer? I didn't even get it through halfway through oh. that game. Yeah, I played about 20 minutes of it. And that wasn't from something that changed in the game that made me feel that way or mm-hmm. something that occurred. Oh, uh, I think I'm going to say Spider-Man. I just don't think he's, yeah. he's that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. No, um, dude, I want to play Spider-Man. I will say one of my pet peeves is when a game introdu- introduces a brand new random mechanic only for a certain part of the game, like a boss fight or something, and you never see it again. I think that's kind of dumb. So what about, I guess you haven't gotten this halfway in this game either, but Persona 5. Uh yeah no I only made, I only played about twenty five hours of that I made it to the fourth palace I think mm-hmm. so well, I, st- I still have pretty much half I still have every intention of beating that at one point in my life I love I the idea of me there's no way you're gonna I love the idea of me having a job doing what I want to do and all I'm doing is going to work and coming home and just sitting down one evening after work with a nice cup of coffee and just playing that every night until I beat it after work. Yeah, that that that's the dream I'm pursuing, Jacob, It's mm-hmm. just to not have to go to school, do uh, two different video game related things, have projects, have t- uh, multiple sound jobs. All this stuff is just like it's going to kill me, Jacob. Yeah, I might actually die. Like Alex said, please don't die. Don't die. But uh, my dream is just to go to work, come home, the end. Mm-hmm. That's my dream. So um, once I reach that point, that is when I will play Persona. Mark my words. OK. If I don't, I'll hold you to that. If I if I if I don't stay true to my word, you have every right to uh, stab me in the forehead with a with what? butter knife. Oh, you have the strength. It might to, take some work, but you yeah. have the strength to uh, launch it through my skull. So, I don't think Preston has that ability, but you certainly. You don't do. think so? No, you're well, a bit. I don't think be- Preston, take Preston's, much. Preston's pretty beefy, but you're a bit beefier than Preston is. I think you could do some real damage being a little scrawny guy with a butter knife. Like, yeah, I mean, if you go for the eyeballs, yeah. are the ears? Yeah, yeah. This is anything with a, a minor opening. I think he can do some damage with the butter knife. This is uh, dark. It's pretty brutal. Um, so. I don't know if I have any examples personally. I usually, if I start a game, I usually finish it. That's typically likewise. That's how likewise. I live my life, Gary. No, I, I play games, I finish them. There have been a handful that I've started in recent months that I haven't finished because I'm primarily doing COD coverage for them, and I have to move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Uh, notably Origins, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't because something changed that made me lose interest. Yeah. See, I didn't start that game because I can't finish it right now. Mm -hmm. Or I would have. Um, There has, there have been some in the past that I can't think of at the moment. I always feel so bad about it because I'd have to really, really think hard about this one because like you said, I usually, especially in the past, have finished most games I start. Yeah. So, looking at the games I have on my thing over there, not seeing anything that really stands out that did that for me no man's sky yeah yeah again nothing changed in that that um made me lose interest i just i i i like no man's sky but i don't, I don't love it what'd you just say yeah alec i'm sorry we can't answer that a bit more in depth but i can totally relate i know i've had that feeling in the past yeah uh viewers eogs fellow that's a great Community question. That's the reason why yes. we call this community questions. Obviously, they're coming from the community to us to answer, but they're not just for us to answer. We've always wanted to hear your responses to some of these yeah. too. If this question sticks out to you, please, in the comments below, to let us know what, if any games have been like that for you. I imagine a lot of people would have a response to that one because, you know, a lot of people play a lot of games, but they don't always finish them. Indeed. They're not like us, you know, where we always finish our games because we're elitist. Yeah. Right, because we're better than everyone. Is that what you're saying, Jacob? Yes, of course. You know what I'm really mad about? What are you mad I, about? I forgot to sip my coffee this entire episode. I was just so enthralled by our conversation and obvious, uh, obviously your beauty as well. So I was just distracted and I didn't sip it. Is it was, cold? It's not cold yet. Let's see. Better get busy. I do really like your mug, by the way. Me too. That's really awesome. Can, yes. I, can yeah. I like read it? Yeah, it's a Batman comics mug of classic Batman comics. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to read this entire comic thread to 
everyone. You know, my uh, adoration for that mug is multi-tiered because it is um, my favorite superhero. Um, oh, really? You like Batman? Yeah. I, I didn't know. Yeah, it's my favorite superhero with a classic design, and uh, it's a very tall mug, so I can fit quite a bit of coffee in there. I prefer a tall, slender mug versus a wide one because I think it's easier to hold and easier to sip. Yeah, I prefer the wide ones. I don't know. Like My favorite mug right now is one I got as a gift a couple Christmases ago from Starbucks, and it's like a nice, thick, white mug. It's about yay high yay thick like it's it's pretty yay, it's huh? a thick boy but uh it's it's like what's the exact a, uh mathematical a, circumference of this mug god i couldn't tell you that but <laughs> dude, I, the handle is so like it's wide and thick and it's mm -hmm. easy to hold and it just i, I down some serious coffee in that mug okay. i gotta tell you so i guess neither of us are trendy enough to drink coffee out of a mason jar like a lot of people do in the south when they're trying to look trendy right yeah i no. see a lot of instagram posts of people with uh, i'm not making fun of the bible reading but i think a lot of people uh I think it's so funny when they pose their their devotional time with a, like their open Bible and uh, a mason jar of coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see those too. <laughs> I'm like devotional times between you and the Lord, not you and Instagram. So yeah, but coffee. It's so important. I I take so much issue with Instagram posts specifically. People use it the wrong way, and it drives me insane. Maybe use the wrong way. Like uh, guy. I, I've been reserving this comment for one of Casey's posts for three weeks now because I think it's going to be hilarious oh, no. for me to make a point Yeah, because I've been trying to make my point to her for a while. She made this post uh, at, about Smith's like two or three weeks ago at this point. She's like, come see me tonight, like $3 shot, special event, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and I'm going to people to come. I'm going to comment and be like, hey, is this still happening tonight? And it's, <laughs> it's going to be like on a Monday, three weeks later, like, is this still happening? I'd love to attend this event. And that's, that's the funny. point I'm trying to make. And that's why you don't do that on Instagram. Yeah. On Twitter and Facebook, that's fine because it's more of like a moment to moment type thing where instagram you're you're reserving special moments on your on your feed yeah now there that, that there's a fine line where you can kind of maneuver that a bit and you can it doesn't always have to be the best moments it can be just like a, a tiny little moment that means something to you but there, it's predominantly meant to be timeless moments that's why it annoys me and people do that gotcha i feel like it'd be like even more funny if I just pop, like chimed in a couple weeks later after that. It's like, hey, yeah, yeah, like a month later, hey, like, like you didn't respond. Is this still happening? Yeah, is this still happening tonight? I'd like to come to this. <laughs> just, just every every few months, just drop in and do that. So and eventually she deletes it and we win. Yeah, that's exactly that's the ultimate goal. She'll learn. <laughs> we'll, we'll show her. Yeah. Uh, Josh Scriber, Alec, thank you for your question, by the way. Josh Scriber writes in and says, Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed your summer, both indoors and outdoors. Did we already answer this? Um, Let me briefly examine it. He says, First things first, Preston, I'm going to tell, try my hardest to platinum Spider Man. I know you'll do the same. Uh, if, if we answered this, I wasn't here. No, we didn't answer this. I remember now. I think I've just read this a couple times because I've saved it for a while. Okay. Um, he said, Preston, I'm going to try my hardest to platinum Spider-Man, and I know you'll do the same. If you could pick the design for the next brand new suit for the in-game Spidey, what would it be? I would create an exothermal suit built for harsh heat conditions and preventing burns from electric attacks. It would have no web patterns and would just be red and black, mostly black with the EOG spider symbol. Oh, OG spider symbol. I was going to say EOG spider symbol. symbol. Never seen this before, but I'm interested. The OG spider symbol on the back. I dig it. Sounds pretty cool. Of course, I love red and black. Uh, oh, hence, it's obvious it. gaming's colors. Yeah. Um, how would you design a Spidey suit? This is hard for me to answer because I haven't even seen all the suits. And there have been a lot of Spider-Man suits. I'd probably I'd be the guy who I've always sorry I've always been a huge fan of just the black symbiote suit. Mm -hmm. like, I've always loved that. That suit. simple, sleek design is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, I love the classic suit, of course. Um, it's hard to be classic. Like, That's the thing. There have been so really many Spider-Man suits I've seen in passing that I know nothing about that I'd, I'd tell you a design and it probably already exists because I think I'm making it up in my mind, but it, I've seen it somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm like a big Iron Man fan, so like the Iron Spider suit is always really appealing. It's always really appealed to me, but that's already in the Spider-Man, so mm -hmm. it's not really a new idea. Okay, here's, here's what I would do. I would combine multiple suits into the ultimate suit that I think would be really cool. So I would have... The so I would have the classic colors, but a bit darker, not not quite as bright, mm -hmm. a bit darker, like a, sh a shade darker of red and blue. I would have very uh, like the, the webs on the suit and the red parts would be there, but they'd be pretty faded, like not very noticeable. Like you'll notice if you compare Andrew Garfield's suit, um, Toby's suit and Tom Holland's suit, uh, Tom Holland's suit has faded spider web lines, so it doesn't look okay. too complicated on the face and everything. 
So they'd be there, but not quite as noticeable. I would have the big eyes from Amazing Spider-Man 2's costume, but instead of being silver, they'd be the gold color from the first movie, because I think the sunglasses gold shade looks so Wait, cool. Like gold from Toby? No, the gold eyes were from uh, Andrew Garfield's original suit, because he uses okay. those sunglass lenses. I thought the, okay, the yellow yeah, yeah. eye, uh, maybe gold or like yellow. I think the yellow eyes look so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'd have the darker shades of red and blue. Um, I'd have the golden big eyes on the mask, and I'd have... Very small hints of black, like in Tom Holland's suit, like on linings of certain parts, maybe around like the uh, the web shooters, yeah. and maybe in like on the heel. You know what I like about the advanced suit is how his shoes look pretty sporty with the white. But mm-hmm. imagine those white parts, and there's like that big heel piece, but they're black. And I'd also have a giant black. Imagine the advanced suit with the, that giant white spider in the back, but it's black. Yeah. And then yeah, on, look, on the front, awesome. it'd have basically the, the same... Uh, original spider design but also black maybe maybe blown out like the big white one but it's black yeah the advanced suit's awesome though yeah. just in general mm-hmm. like i love that suit is sick it. Yeah. it also has the most detail in the game i mean all all the suits when you really get zoomed in on them look incredible from a texture standpoint but as far as uh the way they react to your movements and stuff the advanced suit you can clearly it was intended to be the, the one they invested the most time in especially mm-hmm. when you're diving you can see the ripples moving on a suit and the wrinkles when yeah. he turns certain ways and everything it's incredible I want to go home and just swing now. <laughs> yeah. I, I told you, I, every now and then I'm like, I got 10 minutes to kill. I'll jump in and swing around for 10 mm-hmm. minutes. So I love that. Now that I think about that suit, I want to see it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think that sounds so cool, at least for me. Hey, so. pitch the idea. You sure you don't want to come up with the original? You just said you just like the, the symbiote suit. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what I would do. Okay. I don't, know enough, I don't know enough about Spider-Man to really come up with a good one. I, don't I feel, feel you. Like. Cool. Cool. I would also have, I don't want people to think I've, I've taken the advanced suit and just turned the spider black with golden eyes, bigger gold or golden eyes. I would also have the, the spider boots, like those red boots, but they'd have like the trims of black in them and stuff on the heel and everything. So, yeah, dude, that's my design. I'm into that. Josh, that was a fun question, man. We appreciate it. Carlos Perez writes in and says, this is the one I wanted to wait till Preston was here, but we can't wait two whole weeks to answer it. So I will answer for him. Yeah. He says, what age and memory do you guys have of each other meeting one another for the very first time? Mm, wow. We, we've mentioned this. Uh, what age and memory? Yeah, I, I, I know this to the T exactly for both of you. Okay. Um, we've mentioned this in the past, so I won't spend too much time on it. But Preston and I met in second grade um, when we were in the carpool line. Um, I, maybe we didn't officially meet. The first time I noticed Preston was in the carpool line of our gym in elementary school in second grade. He was sitting next to me, I think, and this was right when the school year started, so he was very tan from his summer break. So tan. Preston tan? Yeah. Wow. So I thought he was a Hispanic child because he had very dark hair, and uh, he's very tan. So I thought Preston he, hair? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, is anyone in this podcast? People have seen, no, Preston never saw, no one ever saw Preston with hair. Mm-hmm. So we started this after we moved out of our apartment. Yeah. Because when we shared an apartment, Preston- he uh, hair. He just, he, Preston had always hated his hair his whole life. You know, he didn't have a bad head of hair. Like, I thought it always looked fine, but he hated it for some reason. He also shed like a wildebeest, too. I don't think he liked dealing with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he hated dealing with it. And I remember I came back from uh, school or work one night, and, he had, and Zach had helped him buzz his entire head. I'm like, you look pretty badass, man, <laughs> I got to say. And we were all so proud of him for just ridding his head <laughs> of, of, of the hair he hated. So, I like Preston's, uh, like, buzz cut look. I think it looks yeah. cool. You want to date him? Maybe I do. Maybe I want to smooch his, his head. Oh. I love rubbing Elliot's bald head. It is nice. Mm-hmm. It's got a nice little peach fuzz to yeah, it. He's got a big head too, so yeah. there's a lot to rub. And there's a lot. You can double you can double fist oh, his yeah, head. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> I would mind taking a little <laughs> on his head. Yeah. So I'd probably feel nice. I'll let him know you're in his thoughts. Or wait. Yeah, you're in. He's, he's in, in my thoughts. thoughts. Yes. His bald head is in my thoughts. Yes. <laughs> I'm lusting after his head, basically. I, I haven't seen him in like a month, though. I really? Him. Yeah. I haven't seen him in a while either. Yeah. Hope he's doing it's well. Very I'm, sure, rare I'm sure he's doing well. When we all get to gather mm-hmm. together. He's, he's the only body in our group of friends that rivals, rivals yours. He's bigger than I am. That's for sure. Yeah, you're st- he's a, he's that a taller man. That doesn't undermine a... your beauty, Jacob. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Picture this. This guy's, Elliot's thighs are so thick. I'm trying to think, compare to them something. They're like treats. It's almost intimidating when you see his thighs. Like yeah. It almost scares you. 
He's a, a former uh, Ryan or football player. Yeah. And I mean, talk about, talk about player. doing squats, man. It is unfathomable. He could feed a family of cannibals in the apocalypse for probably four months with his thigh. Just one thigh. <laughs> yeah, it's like killing like a turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's like, yeah, imagine two Thanksgiving turkeys on his thighs. That's what he looks like. It's incredible. Yeah, he's he's got some biggins. I'm going to ask him out. Do it. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> you won't do it, dude. Uh so I, I, me and Preston met in second grade and I've uh, been best pals ever since. And we were separated after second grade. We never had another elementary school class together um, because we, I wouldn't say we were rambunctious, but we did get in trouble quite a few times for talking during class. So um, we uh, were separated. It really sucks. Hmm. So this is so random, dude. I got, I got to throw this in here real quick. I thought this was so funny. So have you, have you, did you see the text I sent to our group about American Vandal? No. Okay. Maybe it didn't send. I sent it to our group text. Hmm. But American Vandal season one on Netflix, if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend it because it is some of the most brilliant modern writing I've ever seen. Not only I did see it. Yeah, not only for a TV show, but just uh just from a production standpoint, it was I was blown away at how good it was. It had no reason to be that good to it, because it's so absurd, but it's yeah. so good. And it's like it's like purely a comedy, but with like dramatic undertones to it. Like the ending is very a very profound gut punch at the end. Should I start watching this right now? Dude, it's awesome. Okay. Talk about them nailing what it's like to be a modern high schooler. It is incredible. <laughs> but uh, You got me interested. Yeah, you should definitely check it out, and it's hilarious. I love high schoolers. Extremely entertaining. Casey and I binged the first season. But anyway, we just started season two. But the trailer for season two is one of the funniest things I've seen in recent memory because it's all about mm -hmm. poop. <laughs> and okay. it's just... <laughs> I watch the trailer at least for season two and you will laugh out loud. I promise. It's so funny. Okay. <laughs> but the reason why I mention that is because one of the main uh, topics of discussion at the beginning of the season of season two is about people pooping themselves and how that will follow someone for life. And I found that to not only be funny because poop is funny, but it, it's so true for two reasons, because there have been two individuals in my lifetime that I remember them for poop. Oh, God. <laughs> the first one was this girl, bless her heart in elementary school who was known for pooping her pants regularly. And I was not one who made fun of her, but I definitely laughed at the other people making fun of her. That's what kids do. I'm sorry. That's yeah. just a fact. Yeah, she pooped funny. herself and we thought it was hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I distinctly remember sitting in our second grade class. I think Preston was sitting right next to me with this guy named Zach in our class was sitting next to me on the, on my other side. And we were in this little, like uh, my, I think my teacher was reading from a book and we're all sitting on the floor. And the girl who pooped herself was in front of me and just, I don't know why he made this joke, but I'll never forget it. This is second grade, mind you. I still remember this like it was yesterday because I, th I still think this is brilliant. Who made this joke? This kid just in my class named okay. Zach. He, he nudges me and I look at him and he's like, hey. And he points to her butt sitting in front of him. So he goes, look out. Don't make it mad. <laughs> 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 and I thought that was the funniest thing as a kid. And I still remember it to this day. And I remember that girl, like I said, I feel really bad about it. I remember her for pooping herself. That's disgusting. And the other girl, both girls, ironically, um, was a high school girl. I'm not going to name her for her sake, but you probably know who I'm talking about. Uh, I know her as the poop girl because there was a very heavy rumor floating around. It could be false, but it sucks. Even if it's false, people will still remember this. Yeah. She was known for pooping on a guy's chest at a party. Mm -hmm. So what do they call that? It's like a certain move. And uh, it's like a sex act. It's called yeah. like a, <laughs> like a steaming Charlie or something. What's called <laughs> Google. What does it mean to shit on a man's chest or on anyone's chest for that matter? It's called something steamer. Like, 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 Cleveland steamer. Cleveland <laughs> steamer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i remember that girl for pooping too and every time i see her pop up on social media from time to time I'm like there's the poop girl <laughs> a sexual act by nature <laughs> fetish the cleveland steamer is one person craps on another person's chest and very important then sits down and rocks back and forth like a steamer. no way no, i didn't know about that part <laughs> oh man you gotta roll around in it that is incredible it's like you're playing in the mud you know just... yeah, we should try that sometime dude i would be totally down i'm down dude to you as long as you promise to return the favor <laughs> hell yeah mind you if we I do this you soon you gotta i gotta warn you i've been on those laxatives man it ain't gonna be pretty i'm like, so excited it's gonna be a brutal cleveland steamer <laughs> then we so. can shower together and it'll be great yeah it'd be cool good times man i look forward to it what are we talking about 
memory um, meeting each other. How yes. the hell did we get on this topic? <laughs> so me and Preston have been friends in second grade. Met him in uh, um, the gym, I think, during the carpool line, like I said. But funny, funnily enough, we actually met when we were even younger, I think in kindergarten or first grade, at the uh, pool in his neighborhood. It was it doubled as a public pool. So we would go to the pool in his neighborhood as kids, and I think we hung out a couple of times at that pool unknowingly. So I've technically known Preston since kindergarten or so. Mm-hmm. So pretty wild. Excellent. I think he's my he is my oldest friend. Hmm. So now you and I met, I think, officially freshman year of high school. Oh yeah, because we never really talked in eighth grade. Yeah, my oldest memory of you was in it was either seventh or eighth when we had that class together. Yeah, it was eighth because I was in uh, Orlando, Florida, yeah. seventh grade. Yeah. So we we always talk about it, but we had like the same science class, and uh, yeah, I think we had a crush on the same. Girl. Yeah, we did. So I noticed the first time I noticed Jacob because Jacob was one of the popular kids in middle school, mm-hmm. and uh, the first day of school. Not sure why. I remember I what you wore on your first why. day of school, Jacob, eighth grade. Yeah, what yeah. Did I wear? You had? I don't know. You had a mullet. You remember that mullet? Oh, dude, how could I forget? And Jacob had a mullet. Uh, you had highlights, blonde highlights in your hair. Mm-hmm. What a do, man! Blonde highlighted it. mullet. I hated how those came out. Hell yeah, they were orange. <laughs> You should bring that back. That's a yeah. good look, man. Especially with that body. Imagine that as a summer beach body with your blonde and yeah. <laughs> highlighted mullet. <laughs> man, that was talk about irresistible, that. man. <laughs> that is going beyond plus ultra on the irresistible scale for Jacob Alka. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, um, anyway, you had, a, uh, you had that hairstyle. You had a uh, button down like shirt from American Eagle with I the like sleeves rolled those. up. Yeah. And you also yeah. had, had short. Off the gun. Yeah, you had short cargo khaki shorts on with yeah. flip flops. Hell yeah. You know why I remember that? Why? Because I'm in love with you, obviously. Oh, now, I just have a very photographic memory of certain days. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I so photographically, photographically remembered my first day of eighth grade was because I was just felt humiliated the whole time. Because remember... <laughs> why, why were you humiliated? I was never popular in middle school. I had a very small group of friends, if any. I think I had one friend who lived across the street in my neighborhood. Okay. And... uh I came back from Florida in total skater mode because everyone there was really into skateboarding. So I yeah. had super long hair. I had a Volcom t-shirt on and green basketball shorts and Vans. Green basketball green, shorts. Green, like bright green. Uh-huh. And uh, there, there, <laughs> are multi- there are multiple things I remember from that day. Um, Did someone make fun of your shorts? Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Dude, everyone made fun of me that day. It's like Because I, st- I stuck out like a literal sore thumb because everyone was in prep mode in, in Forsyth County, Georgia in oh, eighth yeah. grade. And oh, I was yeah. the dur- as opposite as you could get is what I was in eighth grade. So that's I remember that was when we all got into because remember you get there off your bus or carpool line in the morning and everyone goes into the cafeteria and hangs out to the bell rings to go to class. Mm-hmm. That's where everyone was. And that's when I saw you. Gotcha. So uh, I also remember my first period being uh gym or pe mm-hmm. and i was up in the top of the bleachers when they were taking roll and when they said my name like garrett drake like eight people were like oh and, and matthew bottoms was like garrett drake garrett drake because <laughs> Ma- matthew bottoms was one of the few people i talked to in uh sixth grade before i moved yeah <laughs> it's like i had come back from the dead or something of course i look the like i was always goofy look like to- to- yeah i look like a total bozo with my long hair and skater outfit yeah <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I never remember our Sean Bobo when they were taking roll. I had those same green. It was like a white pair of shorts, a green pair of shorts on again, where, you know, in PE, you all sit in like a formal line on the floor where they yeah. take roll before you get going. Yeah. And Sean Bobo was like across the gym. Yeah. And somehow I caught his eye and he's just staring at me. And we stare at each other in <laughs> silence. I just hear him go, hey, you think you're cool in those white shorts? <laughs> <laughs> and me being such a bitch in middle school I was like I, I don't know <laughs> when I think about it, that's one of the funniest jokes I think I've ever heard in my life uh, I think you're cool in those white shorts there's very few people that I thought were ever funnier than him <laughs> yeah he was he was our class president senior year of high school I don't know he, what, he where beat, he is he beat one of the prettiest most popular girls in our class for class president because yeah. everyone thought it was so absurd and he yeah. won that's like Donald Trump in high school. That's what that's what it if was. Donald like. Trump was like really, really funny. Then yeah. that would be the same. I think Trump, <laughs> and and mostly bad ways, sometimes good ways, is hilarious. Oh yeah. But Sean have, Bobo have in that the, same the sense was like that. Recent meme right now that's going around where he's like hissing. He goes hissing. Like, he goes like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from that clip of him doing that. Yes. <laughs> that's what I mean by him being funny. Yeah. So that's that's hilarious. Um, yeah, we had a lot of funny people. Yeah. Just, Goofy ass people in our, our class. Mm-hmm. I don't want to name too yeah, many. That, names. We're, we're, we're dropping a lot of names here. I won't name this name, but uh, my best friend from sixth grade, also one of the mo- most popular kids in our class at the time, 
which is so funny. One of my only friends is one of the most popular kids in the class. I think he's just one of those guys who's just nice to me and we'd hang out a lot. Okay, I went camping mm-hmm. with his family. I went to church with him. We played all of Halo 2 on split screen together. So he was one of my good buddies. I go away from a year for a year. I come back first day, eighth grade. He sees me in the hall. He's like, hey, man, do you remember me? I was like, yeah. He goes, oh, cool. And he just walked away. That's one of the last times I spoke to him. Nice. I kid you not. I've said maybe four words to him since that day. I know who this is. Yeah. Weird, man. Yeah. But you and I met officially, I think, freshman year of high school when our group, our group from high school began to form. I think we really started hanging out consistently. Sophomore year. Uh, yeah. So, end of sophomore year, like middle of sophomore year going into junior year is when our, our group was established. Junior year is when I really started hanging out with you guys a lot. Yeah. I think that's when you and I began to uh, flirt with each other and yes. become friends. And have sexual tension in the room. <clears throat> oh, yeah. A whole lot just, of you tension. You could feel it. Like there was just a cloud overhead where we were just mm-hmm. very, so Very passionate energy when we were around each other. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's when I met you first was what we briefly mentioned earlier was. You know, yeah, that's grade. funny, though, in eighth grade, because we sat acro- directly across from each other in our science class on opposite sides of the classroom. Jacob and I literally stared at each other. You mm-hmm. sat next to that really pretty Asian girl in our class. Who? Who was that? I can't remember her she name. She obviously wasn't important. But she, she was very beautiful, too. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we sat next to the girl in our class uh, that Jacob and I, I think half the school had a crush on this girl, and I sat right next to her. Yeah. I remember thinking I dated her in seventh grade when you were gone, Mm -hmm. ironically. Uh, I technically dated her in eighth grade for two weeks, but I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I was so afraid of her that when I asked her out and she said yes, I didn't know what to do after that. I literally would go days without talking to her and I would avoid her. Yeah, that happened. I was so afraid of her. It's like you didn't have cell phones in middle school or we didn't. Yeah. I remember the, the day after I asked her out, I like tried to walk her to the bus and i just didn't know what to say to her at all to. and this guy this popular guy comes up and like brushes past he's like you two making out yet and he's like uh-uh, and like walks away and i was like oh no he got you guys yeah <laughs> killed it man so oh young love yeah it was the best middle school the best but the first time i met preston garrett um it was at that trip we went on the uh there was a trip that we went for church and it was called the walk oh poor preston man he, he so he hated that yeah this is this is not a one of my favorite things one, one of my favorite tales not one of your shining moments yeah not one of my good moments <laughs> in my life <laughs> i uh i kind of bullied preston on this trip uh you not, and, not you like, and a few others not like hardcore but like i was just kind of like pitching in i'll say because I, I wasn't like instigating it per se but I, I was like during that time I was definitely trying to fit in in school as you know as young lads do when they're in early high school they want to fit in they want to you know be the cool guy that's always what I would what I strived for obviously but uh, you succeeded yeah I uh, continuously just kind of pestered Preston alongside other fellow members in our group and uh, I, I do feel really bad about it and we've talked about it on the podcast before and hopefully there's no I don't think there's any you know hard feelings there shouldn't be at least. Because, you know, we've, we've, we've separated our differences, you know, we're, we're good, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I was a piece of shit back then, Garrett. So, uh, you know, we've moved past that. <laughs> That's why I want to Cleveland steamer you because you're a piece of shit. Yeah. I'd serve it. <laughs> Might as well add to the pile. <laughs> yeah. I remember that trip fondly. A yeah. lot of pranks. It was a fun trip though. Like I think everyone had a good time. Maybe, maybe Preston didn't, but <laughs> Did we find, finally get around to telling the pee bottle story in this podcast? I've told that have, story yeah. so many times that oh, yeah. I can't remember where I've told it. Yeah, we used to pee in bottles and we'd drop it down on people on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> That's way out of context. So you have to build up to that first. And we'll, we'll explain it when Preston's back here. Because yeah. I think there's a community question about that. If we've told the pee bottle story, because this is a very profound story in our in our friendship, like me, Jacob, and Preston in particular. It's so funny, though. So if we if we haven't told it or if you haven't heard it, please let us know in the comments below or on Discord, because that's a story worth telling. It is so funny. Mm-hmm. But, I know we've told it at least once. Yeah, just the, the title, pee bottle story. People are like, what the fuck? So it's funny. It's pretty gross. Yeah, that's pretty much how we all met. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how Preston met me did he meet me at the same time like i like that's my oldest memory of preston i don't know if i had met him prior to that i feel like maybe i had like maybe over at your house or something i don't know possibly or maybe at that was that was maybe uh, at church that was shortly before we were hanging out pretty consistently so you may have met him at inside out a couple times yeah that yeah but i don't have any memories of that so Mm -hmm. obviously it wasn't important you know my one of my most memorable moments from inside out was just a random sunday when we were all sitting at a table eating wendy's after the service. We used to have good food back then. Yeah. And uh, 
someone pitched the idea. Who do you think? Who do you think's faster, Usain Bolt or Chad Johnson? And before anyone can answer, Dave chimes in. He goes, "The real question is who has the bigger penis." There's like a very brief moment of silence, and all at once, like all eight of us, Chad Johnson. <laughs> so keep funny. in mind, this is our, our it was our small group leader. At, yeah, at church. Yeah. He was, he is he's hilarious. Yeah, I, I run to him every once in a while when I uh, volunteer. Yeah, he's always a pleasure to talk to. Yeah, this this is the same leader who uh, told us in our first church camp in the mountains that uh, you know bastard technically isn't a cuss word because bastard means bastard, whereas other cuss words mean something else specifically. Yeah. We're like that's a good point. So we all started calling each other bastards for four years straight. We're just known as the bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is like, what are they? What? <laughs> yeah. Man, I those are some but one of some of the best four years of my life. So many memories from that. And our excuse was it wasn't a uh, curse word, so we, we were allowed to say it. Right. Bastards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> amazing. Uh, Carlos, thank you for your question. That was a fun one. It's a shame Preston wasn't here because I'm sure he could have added a bit to that. But sure, maybe we'll have him. You know, you win some, you lose some. You know, yeah, you gotta you gotta show up to to, to show up. Man, I hate the guy. I'm kind of glad he's not here, but exactly. he'll probably be back next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Maybe we just maybe he's not. You know. Spitting Cobra is spitting some questions our way oh, for the big dude. finale. Wow. He says, hello, boys. Hey there, boy. Not sure if you guys had seen the PlayStation Classic releasing in December. It's kind of like the Nintendo Classic, but for PlayStation fanboys. Uh, before I continue his question, hashtag not fanboys from the two of us. Thanks for putting that in. It's going to have 20 games to include Final Fantasy VII. Uh, to, uh, 20 games to include Final Fantasy VII. This is something you guys would... Or, is this something you guys would be interested in in the cheap price of ninety nine ninety nine? Keep in mind that an original Final Fantasy VII copy can be over a hundred buckaroos. Mm. Uh, Spitting Cobra first, I apologize for not including this in our questions last week. Mm. Or at this point, a few days ago. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, uh, this is one of the ones at the end of last week. I was like, we can do two more, Jacob. You're like, oh. Uh, I was like, just kidding. We're only going to do one more. And this would have been good because we talked about the classic last week. But um, I don't think I don't I have no intention of investing at the moment because I can't think of any because, again, I didn't play too many PlayStation one games despite having a PlayStation one for a while before PS2. So it doesn't appeal to me that much. So at the moment, I have no intention of, of picking it up. Yeah. If the eventual remake, episodic remake, whatever they end up doing for Final Fantasy seven actually releases, then I'll probably play it then. Yeah. But. No intention now. Very cool commodity, like you said, for PlayStation fanboys, which we aren't. Yeah, dude, we're not fanboys. But uh, it's cool that that it, it exists for hardcore fans. I kind of feel the same way. Um, I think the price is a little steep for what it is. Um, how much are the NES and SNES classics? Do you happen to know? Uh, they're okay? less than 100. I think they're like 80-ish. Yeah, I feel like 100 for this is a little steep. But, I mean, they haven't announced all the games. Maybe there's just some real bangers Well, don't forget what Sony said. PlayStation is the ultimate place to play. Yeah. Even if it's PlayStation 1 games, it's still the ultimate place to play. that more money. I don't know. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm not, I was never a PS1 player. So none of those games really, you know, were speaking to me on a level where I need to buy that thing. I get that. But um, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm glad that it's a thing for those excited. Like, cause, you know, a lot of people grew up with that system. So. Mm-hmm be definitely nice for them to you know go back and relive those mo- memories those moments um i really want to see that n64 classic though like if that could ever happen i will that's one that i will get here i think that's a given if they've gone this far already with the classics with the classics with nes and SNES, they might as well go all in then like, 64 give, give me a small portable way to play smash 64 mario kart 64 Donkey Kong 64. If you're lucky, they'll Pokemon wind up. Stadium Pokemon Snap. Yeah, if you're lucky, they'll Jesus wind up on dude. Switch at some point. Yeah. What a library Switch could have if they had. Uh, um, what, what, are they, what do they call that service from, from Wii U? Um, um, Wii Sports? No, no, no. What are you no, talking no. about? Uh, like being able to play old games on modern consoles. Um, I, we were talking um, about it forever. I just can't remember what the actual title is. <laughs> what is it? Uh, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, why can't I think of what it is? Um, uh, virtual console yes yeah. yeah yeah so if that ever happens the ultimate library on switch it would just kill why why are we getting these stupid pokemon let's go pikachu and eevee games why can't we get a pokemon snap sequel that's what the world really needs are you being sarcastic being right completely now? serious okay like i would rather like they're making mainline pokemon games next year they're, presumably they're coming out next year right 
So why didn't they just scrap this let's go idea? Like, forget Pokemon Go. Everyone's over Pokemon Go, okay? Let's just have Pokemon Snap 2. I gotta say, that's uh, what the world needs. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee are pretty charming uh, I from what I played play at them. E3. Yeah. Oh, you played them at E3? Mm-hmm. I must have forgotten yeah. you did that. I told you I played with that, those weird Nintendo uh, reps who were very, pr- very pretty girls who yeah. I think are my... Uh, robots. Yeah, basically robots. <laughs> I think they're brainwashed by Nintendo to be just uh, walking marketers, essentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we're playing like Mario Tennis, for example, and one of us would score and she'd be like... Oh my gosh, that was so great. Now remember, this game comes out on this date with these features. We're like, great, thank you. And she would say that like 20 times. She's Yikes. acting like a robot. All of our reactions were totally like scripted and fake. Like she's pulling from like a like a pre-scripted pull in her brain. Yeah. And I tried to break her out of it because she had these really cool Nintendo Vans on. I was like, man, those are some cool shoes. And she, she didn't know how to re- respond. It's like almost like I broke the computer. Like, oh, no, she just looks screen. down and she just looks up and smiles. And she's like, does not compute. Mario Tennis is coming out in this date. No, no, your shoes. Excuse me, ma'am. Be a human being. It's okay. <laughs> but that was a really funny experience. Yeah, yeah. Same thing when I would catch a Pokemon and then just like cheer and be like, that was so good. Were you using the Pokemon, the Pokeball controller? I was. That That's why I was, I think I was, to, it was appealing to me is because that thing feels so good to hold. It and sucks. It's like 70 bucks or something. Or it might be more actually. You have the, to buy that bundle. Oh, do you? Yeah. And now is you talking like, Ten dollars more than the act- the normal price, or is it seventy more dollars to acquire? I think like the actual to buy the ball. Like it comes with Mew. Let's That's the up. only way you get Mew in the game, and I think it's fairly expensive. Let's and it'll go be a limited supply too. EV Pokeball controller. Edition. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks with the Pokeball. Yeah, I'll see so, this. Is it, so is it? If you're a hardcore Pokemon fan and you want the ultimate experience with those two games whichever one you pick if not both of them it's totally worth investing that extra what is that 40 bucks i think it might be more on its own i don't mm-hmm. know it might be smaller or, yeah what, what what was that is that it on its own it's 50 bucks okay so that's not as much as and, I the, and the game is 60 so yeah right are you gonna be playing that this year or are you gonna pass I, on it? I don't think so i'm probably gonna pass i don't i, I like I don't pokemon but i don't like it that much but have you ever played a pokemon game in full not all the way through okay Mm-mm. i mean I, if you were going to do that i would wait for the ones next year i agree yeah i think i'll i'll be into that idea just starting fresh with like a brand new yeah uh like this generation pokemon and on game. the switch on the switch yeah i'm just excited saying. to see this game though on the switch it'll be nice to play through kanto again i'm excited yeah. to see the story they tell um but yeah that controller feels awesome mm-hmm. so i recommend it if you're gonna play it I don't know, like, I don't know if I'm going to be a huge fan of the motion controls, though, because like, I, I don't know if you can play with not using those. I think you can. Hmm. Yeah, you can. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I did. But, I uh, think uh, that's about it for us this week, Jacob. That was a nice, concise episode, I think. We yeah. went, on, went on several tangents as usual, but mm-hmm. I enjoyed our conversation. I thought we're, it was fun. We're really good at tangents. Oh, yeah. We excel at tangents. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad this was a little more concise today. I got some things I want to take care of today. So Cool. I'm glad to hear it. I'm yeah. going to... Including going to eat. I'm very hungry. Dude, you want to go eat together? I haven't eaten yet. Uh, you said you're going to do Zaxby's? Yeah. Oh, I eat so much Zaxby's. Are you going to go to the drive-thru and bring it back? I mean, initially, that was what I was going to do, yeah. But, I mean, if you're going to go with me, I wouldn't do that. Hmm. I have to leave here around 5.15. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. And I kind of want to play some do it more next. Assassin's Creed. You can do it next. We can go to Taco Bell. Oh, man. What do I want to do, Jacob? What do I want to do? Are you willing to sit down in Zaxby's? If you want to do that, we we can do it. Let's do it. Okay. You want me to drive and just bring you back to your car, or do you want to drive separate? Uh, uh, I know this is a conversation to have off the podcast. Man, this is our lives. You're, you're listening to our lives right now. Let's go together. Okay. I like that because we can talk and listen to some tunes, maybe. Yeah, dude. Maybe hold hands. Yeah. It'd be cool. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dabble in some more Assassin's Creed, eat some chicken with you, and uh, go to work tonight. Nice. So it should be a good time. Pretty easy night as well. I'm excited about it. I don't have to be there nearly as early. Why, why is that? Because it's a, a rental tonight, so it's not a normal like load-in show that Smith's runs. It's run entirely by uh, an entity who has purchased the room for the evening. Mm-hmm. So it'll be pretty laid back. Gotcha. <clears throat> I'm excited. Mm. So. Yeah, but as always, Jacob, it's a, truly a, an honor and privilege in all seriousness to uh, do this week in and week out with you for nearly four years. Indeed. <laughs> and uh, I'm quite proud of us for continuing on in spite of um, occasional criticism 
sometimes warranted, sometimes not, but occasional criticism and uh, our never ending conflicting schedules. Um, it's always a miracle, but I'm glad that the miracle lives on. And to all of you supporting us out there, either on Discord or on YouTube, wherever you might be in the world, even if you've never said hello to us, we encourage you to do so. But regardless, thank you for tuning in and uh, keeping this podcast afloat because without all of you, it would never happen. We would have quit literally years ago if you guys didn't support us all, for all this time, especially those of you who've been around since uh, practically the beginning. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have been around for a very long time. Yeah, for a channel that is very random, sporadic, just general let's plays. I mean, we're capable, like I said, of doing much, much more, but, uh, given, um, our, our schedules, there's only so much we can do, but the fact that you guys stick around and continue to supply us with community questions and support us is truly an honor and privilege. And, uh, I mean, some YouTubers dream of having that, even our, like we said, our community is relatively small. It, it is still a thriving, friendly, engaging community. And we can't thank you guys enough for that. We love it. Yes. Um, that being said, like we said, uh, this podcast is available on multiple platforms, but if you're willing to take the time to do so in order to help us grow significantly, uh, take the time to hop on over to Apple podcast and rate, uh, review and subscribe to us. Those are the big three rate review and subscribe. Even if the review is 10 words or five words, three words, I like this exclamation point that counts as a review. <laughs> Let me see if we have any reviews. I yeah, we, we haven't checked in a while, but, uh, it is still possible to hit new and noteworthy. I think you have to have, a. Uh, couple hundred maybe um maybe a little over 100 reviews and subscription stuff but the big big part of it is subscriptions and everything and imagine some of it has to do with play count but at the end of the day as long as we have those subscriptions and ratings and reviews it helps us out a lot and uh keep in mind you can turn off downloads you can subscribe to us and never go back there and it still helps us out so if you guys are willing to take five minutes while you're taking a dump or you're in a boring meeting at work and you're pretending to be taking notes on your phone and you're actually reviewing us on itunes that'd be rad so I don't know when the last time we did this was, so I don't know if these are new or not. <laughs> How new do we have total? Uh, I don't know. Does it I mean, not say the The top? last one we had was since October 22nd. October? Sorry, August 22nd. Okay, that's not, that's a month ago. I don't, I don't know. I think this is a little... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I've read this before. Okay. But yeah, leave us some reviews. We'd love that. We'd give you a shout out on that. so thankful. For sure. Yeah, of course. Well, Jacob, it was a pleasure. Like yeah. I said, a thousand times now. Um, I look forward to going to ta not Taco Bell. <laughs> I'd like Taco Bell, but I like Zaxby's too. Yeah. So you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, we hope it's excellent. We hope your Monday is going well if you're listening on Monday. And uh, we love you to bits. We'll catch you again next time. Yep. See you guys. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Cool.